Welcome back to another episode of Bring the Juice. Your guys, Derek and Cody, back for another episode, guys. And we want to welcome on a special guest. You may know him. You may have be subscribed to him. He does a lot of NFL content, is a Colts fan, so we had to bring him on. Swaggy on YouTube, man. How you doing? Uh, thanks for coming on the show, man. Good to have you. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. I'm doing great. I will say that win over the Titans on my birthday, that was the best birthday gift I ever could have asked for. <laughs> oh man i'm sorry about gave you a heart attack on your birthday that was uh that was a crazy game one of the craziest ones i've seen in a while so um but happy belated birthday to you um and man just excited to kind of get into this matchup because this i don't know about you guys but this really feels like a playoff atmosphere type of game you know colts traveling to cincy and you know both these teams right on the fringe right the colts right now in the playoff picture cincinnati right outside of it Obviously had a big win on Monday Night Football against the Jacksonville Jaguars, who, keep in mind, did sweep the Indianapolis Colts earlier this season. So a lot on the line here, guys, for both of these teams. And uh, ironically enough, you know, this is maybe a matchup you looked at at the beginning of the season. You said Joe Burrow versus Anthony Richardson. But no, it is not. It is Gardner Minshew versus Jake Browning in this game. So um, Swaggy Man, talk to me about how you felt about the Colts so far through this season, 7-5 and five record right now, and heading in now to a very important game against the Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah, so overall, I mean, I really couldn't have asked for more out of the Colts. I was just – I would have been happy for them to be competitive, to win some games, to be better than last year. But now we're talking about them potentially even winning the division. And I think, like, where it started is just Shane Steich, and he's just completely changed the culture of this team, the way he's calling up plays. I mean, he makes – you know, Gardner Minshew is a solid quarterback at best. And the Colts are winning games with them four in a row. I mean, they didn't lose all of last month. So going into the Bengals game, it's just going to be a tough physical game. Getting Grover back, I think it's going to help. Whoever wins up front, I really do think is going to win that game. So, Yeah, I mean, we have to talk about this game specifically. And I think that the main thing that's on everyone's mind right now is going into this, this last game that we saw the Bengals – play against the Jaguars. Everyone thought, oh, Jacksonville's just going to destroy them because, you know, we saw what the Bengals were and they're obviously without Joe Burrow, their franchise quarterback. Everyone's just like, oh, this is about to be a stomping ground for Jacksonville. And then sure enough, we see Jake Browning put on one of the greatest performances that's ever happened inside that stadium ever, you know, putting up 350 yards and completing 87% of his passes. He he looked like one of the best quarterbacks in the league out there during that game. So, I mean, does his last performance against Jacksonville change your opinion about the Bengals and how much of a chance they have in this game against the Colts? It does it to me. I mean, Browning was great high school and college quarterback. A lot of it has to do with Jamar Chase, right? I feel like a lot of quarterbacks with him out there on the outside would look pretty good. But for the Colts, like, we know who we are. We've been getting a lot of pressure. We believe in this team and our defense. Gus Bradley, of course, in year two of his scheme. So, like, yeah, I do feel a lot worse than I did, obviously, like, before that game happened. But I still like our odds. I still think we're going to go in there and take care of business. So. And it definitely will help getting Juju Brents back. He did practice on Thursday, so that's definitely a good sign for him potentially returning after missing, what was it, five games due to that quad injury. So it'll be great to see him. Um, but when it comes to you know talking about this Bengals offense, right, um, really what their stronghold had been, you know, obviously with Joe Burrow, had been passing the football. We know the kind of weapons that they have, even with Joe Mixon out of the backfield at running back. They have Jamar Chase. They have T. Higgins. They have a few guys that can really beat you. So, man, you talked about the uh, the Colts pass rush, right? How critical do you think it's going to be in this game for the Colts to be able to get pressure early and often on Jake Browning and not allow him basically to have a repeat performance like he did against the Jaguars on Monday night? I think it's going to be the most important thing in this game because when we've seen the Colts be able to get after the quarterback, I mean, I feel like we can beat anyone, especially because we only rush four. The majority of the time a lot of teams don't do that so if we can get Browning under pressure and make him think then we're gonna have a great chance because the Bengals they don't run the ball well and I mean even last game they still didn't really but Joe Mixon had those two touchdowns but if we can kind of keep them like one-dimensional keep them the third and long I mean we're gonna have a great chance to win 
Yeah, and of course, Grover Stewart being back definitely helps to stop and slow that rushing attack. Uh, I think it will definitely make the Cincinnati Bengals a little bit more one-dimensional uh, than what they probably were against the Jacksonville Jaguars because they're not going to be able to run the ball efficiently. And, you know, for the weather, that game, I know I'm going to that game. So, I mean, it's, it's supposed to be cold. It's supposed to be rainy. Uh, it's definitely not going to be a great environment for throwing the football. Uh, it might just be a ground and pound kind of day. Um, that's for sure. But I mean, outside of Jake Browning, right? We talk about Jamar Chase. We talk about T Higgins. We talk about these boys that definitely can put up some stats. Uh, we go back to the Tampa game a few weeks back. Remember Mike Evans had that six catch game for 75 yards and two touchdowns on Indy. Uh, and we just saw last week, Jamar Chase had maybe his best game of the entire season uh, against Jacksonville. I mean, do you feel confident, even if Juju isn't there, do you feel confident in guys like Jalen Jones and these other guys to be able to contain Jamar Chase, given everything that we know? I don't. I wish I could say that I did. And it's not to disrespect our secondary. I know it's young, but I mean, this is Jamar Chase. Like, There's not many corners in football that are going to be able to man him up one on one. But as long as we can do it collectively as a unit, that's why, like you know, before we talked about the pass rush, if that can get home, then it will make our secondary have a lot easier day. So uh, but honestly, yeah, I, I do think we can definitely contain them. I, mean, I don't think Chase is going to have like 200 yards or anything, but as long as we can keep it in front of us, we'll be good. Yeah, and we mentioned, you know, you mentioned earlier the Bengals just not really being able to run the football super efficiently this year. And, you know, it's been interesting because when Grover Stewart obviously had the six-game suspension, you know, the Indianapolis Colts, who did have their own issues already with Grover in the lineup, it seemed like that was just – it took it to another level in terms of the ways the Colts struggled against the run. And so while maybe, you know, Cincinnati is not the greatest at running the football – um, do you think the you know um, the Grover Stewart coming back in this game will be the ultimate difference? Because you know even before Grover, this run defense still had some leaks. Yeah, if I'm being honest, I don't think we would win this game if Grover wasn't playing. Because if you look at last week against the Titans, like Henry was doing a lot of damage against us, and the game be- before we played the Titans and he was out there, we did a pretty good job. So I mean, Stewart is one of the best at his position, top 10, top five in football. And of course, as you said, like even with him, we still had some question marks, but the numbers don't lie. I mean, when Stewart's out there, we're like significantly better at stopping the run and that's going to match up well against the Bengals who already struggled to run the ball. So now they're going to have even a harder time, of course. All right, let's go. Let's go to uh, the offensive side of things here real quickly. Uh, Minshew mania. Uh, It's getting a lot of talk across the nation right now, you know, Indianapolis being at the forefront of the longest win streak in the NFL at the moment. And of course, you know, it's not been pretty. It's not been uh, even good a lot of times when it comes to the quarterback play, but at times the Indianapolis Colts, they just get it done somehow, man. And Gardner Minshew is at the forefront of it. Again, we, we have our strong feelings about him and, I could say it as many times as I want to, but I mean, can't deny that, you know, he's doing enough to win games for the Indianapolis Colts right now. How do you feel about Minshew and what he's been able to do throughout this win streak? Yeah, Minshew is the type of quarterback where he makes some plays that you love and he makes some plays that you hate. I mean, it's crazy because when he has zero turnovers, we have yet to lose a single game this season. So it goes to show that that's the most important thing is Minshew taking care of the ball, no fumbling. I know he's going to take some sacks. He's not the most, you know, Anthony Richardson type of athlete. But Minshew against the Titans made some just unbelievable plays. Like he was hitting Pierce. He was throwing with accuracy, with confidence. And you can see guys just rally around him. So, I mean, I thought we were dead in the water when Richardson went down. I was like, our season's over, man. This is crazy. But then all of a sudden we're starting to get some wins with Minshew and it's exciting too. Like I just love watching him go out there and compete. I know him and Steichen have uh, been with each other the past couple of seasons. So he knows the offense better than anyone. And it's awesome. And I'm here for it. Minshew mania. It's back. 
<laughs> but of course, like you said, like if he doesn't turn the ball over, which has been a big if, it feels like we're about due for a turnover about once per game, if not more. He's due for some sort of head scratching play where you're like, what were you even thinking in that? And obviously, I think he had two against the Titans, the uh, the fumble, which was the big one. Um, and I think there was a few other. I can't remember one. I know the fumble is the one that sticks out to me. Um, and I know Tampa Bay, he had that interception in the red zone that gave Tampa some life. So it seems like there's always something with Gardner Minshew. But the good news is, like you talked about, um, you know, he has been able to command the offense at times. And, you know, to give him credit for all his faults, he did lead the Colts down in overtime and won that game with that walk-off touchdown to Michael Pittman after the big throw to Alec Pierce. And so looking at this Indianapolis Colts passing game as a whole right now, you know, we don't know if Braden Smith's going to play in this game. He left early in the Titans game. He's kind of dealt with some injuries all year long. So if he doesn't play, it'll be Blake Freeland again, the rookie right tackle, who I think for all his, you know, for all the things and situations he's been dealt has played relatively well considering everything. Um, but when it comes to this Indianapolis Colts passing game, you know, the Colts still have Michael Pittman Jr. who's having a career year. He's continually routinely making plays. And, um, you know, just I think it was this last week had – well, yeah, broken uh, a record for the Colts with the most. I don't remember what it was, Derek. The most catches in his first his four first years, four or something like that. Any Indianapolis Colt ever? Yeah, yeah. So they, the Colts obviously have Michael Pittman Jr., who's really establishing himself as that number one wide receiver this year. Alec Pierce comes off his best game of his career. Um, you know, Josh Downs. We know what he can be, and then you know, guys like Kylan Granson and some of these tight ends. Um, so, how do you feel about this Indianapolis Colts passing attack? going against a Bengals team that's really struggled at times to defend uh, the downfield passing and just the passing game in general. Yeah, I think it's going to be big, just like it was last week against the Titans. I mean, I'm in love with our weapons. When we got Josh Downs, I thought he was one of the biggest deals of the draft in the slot. Pittman's having an unbelievable season, his hands and just overall ability, the consistency. And, of course, Alec Pierce with his breakout game. I mean, he's been wanting the ball more. Of course, he's been keeping it more on the low, but he's the type of guy where he's got the size, the speed to get open downfield, and Minshew's finally getting him the ball. And then our tight ends, I think, are great. So overall, our passing attack, it's obviously not an elite. Uh, it's not our like we're a run team, but if it, it could take advantage of this of this Bengals secondary, that's without their best corner and Cam Taylor Britt. So I do think that's going to be another key to this game is just getting the ball into our guys' hands. Now let's talk about the run game here for a second because. Last week, we saw that Zach Moss was going to be the front runner now while uh, JT obviously nurses that thumb injury. And, you know, they were missing his presence last week. I think Zach Moss, I think, only ran for like 40 yards. Uh, the Colts could not run the ball effectively at all against Tennessee. Now, I will admit the Tennessee Titans typically do a much better job of stopping the run than the Cincinnati Bengals. I don't think the Bengals have been great all year at anything defensively, really. So there's that uh, obstacle. But, you know, last week, Indy, they struggled to run the football, man. And I'm not sure. I don't think it had more to do with Jonathan Taylor. I feel like it just had more to do with the type of defense we were facing. Uh, but how confident are you that Indy can run the football against Cincinnati, even with the absence of Jonathan Taylor? Oh, I feel pretty confident. I mean, we saw, of course, before Taylor even took the field, Zach Moss looked unbelievable. I mean, he was putting up some monster games. And I do agree with you. The, the Titans, I mean, to begin with, they're good at stopping the run. Typically, like every year, I feel like they are. But specifically, we're going to face a lot of different uh, defenses that are playing for us to pass. Like, they want us to throw the ball. Of course, they want to make Minshew beat them. And against the Bengals, it's going to be a lot easier to throw on them as well because they, they're already bad against the pass and their best corner, like I said, is out. So, uh, But in terms of running the ball, I mean, yeah, like Zach Moss, I've got full faith in him. I mean, ever since he's been here, he's had a, a, an awesome run. I mean, I know we gave a Pines who I liked a lot, but Zach Moss has looked like a, a starting running back every single week for us. And I'm definitely putting the ball into his hands. Good things are going to happen. Mm, yeah, and it'll be interesting to see do the Colts have a bounce back game because you know you look at it really outside of that Tampa Bay game, the Colts have struggled to run the football. It seems like in a lot of the matchups as of recently, and so we'll see kind of how that works out, man. But I wanted to ask you before we get into score predictions here, um, who are some of your biggest X factors in this game that you think will ultimately determine the outcome of this one? 
Oh, that's a great question. Hmm. I don't I don't think I can say Alec Pierce necessarily because of after what he did last week. But um, how about this? I'll go with I'm going to go with uh, Samson Ebukam just because, I mean, he's been playing his best football of the season. And I feel like in order for us to win this game, we're going to have to get after the quarterback because Browning, it seemed like he just had a lot of time to throw and he was too comfortable out there for my liking. So I think Ebukam is, is the X factor. I think he's going to have a massive game and have forced another fumble in this one. Certainly hope so. Like that. Uh, yeah, that I mean, that Colts defensive line definitely on the verge of a historic season for Indianapolis. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead, hop into some score predictions here. Uh, Swaggy, we'll let you start us off here. Give us your score prediction for the Indianapolis Colts versus the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm going to go with Colts 21, Bengals 17. I think it's going to be very low scoring, just uh, play field position, probably because you mentioned the weather too. So yeah, I'll go 21 17 Colts. Okay. Okay. Cody, uh, what you got, man? Man, that's a good one. I, Cincinnati's defense is not good, and I think the Colts are going to take advantage of that. Um, and, and Jake Browning, for as good as he was last week, let's be honest, he was an undrafted rookie for a reason, undrafted player for a reason, excuse me. And so I just don't see a repeat. I think the Colts will make him uncomfortable. And Cincinnati, let's be real, outside of uh, Monday night, they haven't had a great offensive line all year. So um, I really do think the Colts are going to continue their streak of – you know, getting after the quarterback, you know, making life uncomfortable because, you know, I thought there was a chance here in the last couple of weeks the Colts could go revert kind of back to how they'd been where they have a really good game and then all of a sudden they go back and are barely touching the quarterback. But they have proved me wrong and they are continually getting after the QB. And I like that pick, Swaggy, of, of Samson Ebukam because he's just been a monster. He's the highest graded Colts player right now on defense, really on their entire team, I believe, at an 84 overall. Great. So he's been really, really good. He's had four sacks in the last two weeks. So I think the Colts are going to make life very difficult. And it would definitely be a huge boost if the Colts got back, you know, uh, Juju Brents in this game and kind of, you know, got back to full health in their secondary. You know, Brents has played some good snaps. And, you know, the Colts have played some really good receivers in the last couple of weeks. And so if they can do their best to, as much as possible, not let that guy win them the game, I think that they're going to they're going to be just fine in this game. And also, I'm excited. A guy we didn't talk about, but Nick Cross. I'm excited to see him get some more snaps this week because he got his, I believe his season high, 31 snaps on defense. And I thought he played really, really effective guys. I mean, he was the guy that the Colts took back in 2022 in the third round they traded back up for him if you remember he's got a lot of physical tools that are really exciting he obviously had to block punt and also played some snaps as well so i think the colts are going to give him some more snaps and i think it could potentially help their secondary kind of shore up some of those leaks they've had in the last couple of weeks so i'm going to go for this one i'm going to go indianapolis 24 I'm going to actually go Cincinnati 14. I think the Colts are going to find their swagger. I think Jake Browning and company, they're going to go come back a little bit to earth. And I think the Colts are going to come out victorious. And But it is going to be a tightly contested game. But I think the Colts right now, talent-wise and certainly coaching-wise, um, I think they're 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 just the better football team, 1-53. to 53. So for that reason, I'm going to go Indianapolis winning by 10 in this one. All right. I'll tell you what, it feels good to actually uh, start picking the Colts to win games now. Uh, I mean, Cody, we were talking about it uh, early in the season. You know, people were uh, bashing us for picking against the Indianapolis Colts for a good chunk, even last year. And I was like, well, what do you want me to what do you want me to do? Just not acknowledge the fact that this team is not very good right now. Uh, I'm not going to do that. But it feels good to finally. uh be playing some in some games and feeling confident in this Colts team going forward. Um, even nice. after, even after this game, even if not, I'm still going to feel confident in what this team has moving forward. Uh, I think it will definitely be a close game. I'm going to go with a final score of Indianapolis 24 Bengals 20. Okay. Awesome. Sounds good. Well, Swaggy, appreciate you, man. Why don't you tell everybody where they can find you, find your content, find your work, if you're on social media at all, where they can find you and all that stuff. Yeah, so uh, you can find me at YouTube at Swaggy. Uh, I also have Instagram. It's Swaggy01K. And I'm pretty much on every platform, but I'm definitely trying to make a cult channel one of these days. I've been wanting to do that for years, and I haven't gotten to it. But, yeah, that's really it. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's awesome, man. And uh, definitely uh, love the work you've been putting over there. Um, love the Colts content, obviously, you've been cranking out as of recently. And, man, I tell you what, 55,000 subscribers, that's pretty impressive, man. Um, I'm sure it's been a, a really awesome ride for you. I know it's been for us as well, kind of building that YouTube channel up to where it is now. Yeah, it's been a lot of ups and downs, but it makes me feel better waking up knowing that the Colts are winning games. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Dude, this is a breath of fresh air. You know, I'm like, I don't even care if the Colts like make the playoffs. That's what I was saying at the beginning of the season. If they're at least fun, you know what? You know, that that's good enough for me, but they've also now are in playoff contention, which definitely makes it even more sweet. So I appreciate you, man, for coming on. Um, we'll have to do it again soon. Yeah, of course, guys. Go Colts. Yes, sir. And thank you guys for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Um, if you haven't yet, be sure to go check out Swaggy's channel and also hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell so that you know when we both drop new content. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, go Colts. Yeah.